Welcome back to One on One, New York's longest running sports call in show. Jimmy Sullivan, Chris Baccia, now pleased to be joined by Otis Livingston. He is the sports director at CBS2 in New York. You can catch him on the news every night anchoring the local sports. Otis, how are you? Thanks for doing, doing this. great. Doing great. You can't catch me on Saturdays, though, because I have to have a day off. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, mo- Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> What do, what do the days even mean anymore? They all bled together, I feel like. You know what? Point. 2020 has definitely uh, given us that. You're right. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here. We've got a, a lot to get into with New York right. sports. I think the biggest story right now is New York football and just how bad both teams have been, quite frankly. Uh, Chris and I are both Jets fans, so we're kind of partisan in that regard. So let's start with the Jets. They're 0-8. Mm-hmm. They're playing the Patriots on Monday Night Football this week. Um, they just have looked absolutely terrible the first half of this season. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that you're looking for out of this team, not just this week, but for the rest of the season to see if there's anything salvageable out of this season? Wow, what am I looking for? I mean, I'm looking for competitiveness, man. I mean, they can put together a half sometimes and then not come out of the uh, the halftime break uh, inspired. You know, they can't sustain drives, too many three and outs. I mean, it's just a lot of things that you can point to. Um, We got to figure out if Sam Darnold is the quarterback going forward. Um, Obviously, I liked him early on, but, you know, he had that bout with Mono last year and then an injury. Um, So this year he's come back. Does he have enough weapons? That's the problem with this team. There are just so many question marks, you know, on both sides of the ball, on special teams as well. This is just one of those situations where you – you may need a, a complete overhaul. I mean, Adam Gase as a head coach, I mean, I'm talking about from the top all the way down. We, we, it's pretty obvious that he is not the offensive guru that Christopher Johnson said he was. He's coaching where football is going was that classic line that he, well, I don't want to go there. If that's where football <laughs> is going, I don't want to be anywhere near there because he's not, you know, showing anything as far as, making the quarterback better, putting his quarterback in positions. He's even given up the the play calling duties in the last few weeks. You've seen the team has at least come out with some fire and some passion early on, getting points on the board, you know, making you and the rest of the Jet fans feel good about, okay, maybe we can get this game. And then somewhere along the lines, it goes kaput. They can't sustain, like I said, can't sustain drives. You're leaving your defense out on the field uh, an exorbitant amount of time. And when you do that, there's opportunities for teams to score because they're out there too long. You know, we just stopped them. Now we're on the sideline getting a little water. We're back out on the field because you went three and out or turned the ball over. So it's it's just, it. I, I don't even know where to begin because there's so many areas that they need help in. They need improvement in. At 0-8 and, and Adam Gase still being there, is it fair to believe that the Jets are trying to lose games? Because at this point, the fact that he's still there, it, it almost seems like this is a tanking operation. And if that's the case, does that work in football? Oh, man, that's a good question. I, I Just as a competitor and as an athlete, former athlete myself, I just can't believe a team is going to tank and just try to lose games because a team is out there you here's here's the situation though okay some of these players are not going to be around next year anyway what does tanking do for them just to get Trevor Lawrence I'm not even going to be here I may be out of football because we're not successful I'm not putting good things out on tape for future teams you know for my agent to shop me around right so the players are going to go out, and I believe the players are playing to win. Um, at least the majority of them are playing to win. You know, I just think they don't have enough to win games. You know what I mean? I, and, and I believe that, you know, as far as firing Adam Gase, who are you going to replace him with in midseason? Who on that coaching staff are you going to elevate? Because you're not going to bring somebody else in in a situation like this where he has – eight games to kind of indoctrinate himself or or put his philosophy and culture in place. That's not going to work, you know? So, you know, Greg Williams, a lot of people before the season were speculating if Adam Gase lost his job, that Greg Williams was going to be elevated to the head coaching job because he's done that before. But Greg Williams came out this, this year and, and pretty much intimated 
that it's the offense's fault that the defense looks bad. They're putting them in a tough positions and stuff like that. You don't want that as a defensive coordinator saying that about your coach, who's the offensive play caller at the time. You know what I mean? So I thought he kind of blew his opportunity, you know, even though that thing was kind of subliminal, I think everyone got the message of what he meant. You know, he's trying to, you know, and, and, and when you're trying to bring teams, uh, players together, an organization together in a losing atmosphere, you don't want someone who says something that could be incendiary, divisive, or, or just uh, bad for the, the guy who's above you. Talking to Otis Livingston of CBS2 here in New York. All right, Otis, you were talking a little bit before about Sam Darnold, whether or not he's the guy. That is a big question the yeah. Jets need to answer. And if they get to the end of the season and they are 1-15, 2-14, and 14, or God forbid worse. and 0-16, oh, have... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say it out loud. But... <laughs> I don't either, man. I, I don't want to see that. I don't. I mean, they're not my favorite team, but I, I cover them. I have relationships there. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I want to see them win some games. Yeah, at least, at least a game. At least yeah, a, a, game. a, a game. Yeah, <laughs> We'll see where that comes. But yeah. the way things are going right now, the Jets are in position to have the number one pick. And with yeah. the number one pick probably comes Trevor Lawrence. And that yeah. would be a huge decision to make. So, Otis, if the Jets get to that spot and they're the worst team in football, Oof. I mean, are you taking – Trevor Lawrence, uh, what's the decision there? I feel like that's a really tough spot for the Jets to be in. I think it's a tough spot, but this guy is a generational quarterback, everyone's saying. You know, this is a guy who can turn around a, a, an organization. Uh, we saw it a couple years ago, Kyler Murray. Uh, Josh Rosen was taken early. They got rid of him with no problem. Obviously, he didn't perform and show uh, what Sam did, you know, because he has shown promise. He has shown uh that he could be a good quarterback. We just need him to be there now because he's in the third year. If, if Sam came out and had a great year this year and they still lost games, I think that question would probably be moot. But the fact that he has not really thrived and really been successful, I think that brings this question into, you know, bring this thought into question. Oh, man, that, that's just such a tough decision. What can you get for Sam if you trade him? That, that, that has to play in it as well because you don't want to lose a guy who was the third overall pick in the draft just three seasons ago and not get much back for him. So uh, it's a tough decision, but I think it, that's what Joe Douglas is, is paid for. That's what the owner and, 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 and you know, the higher-ups who have that power to make that decision, that's for them. You know, I, I, I would probably go with Trevor Lawrence. Especially if it, obviously I have to know that he's coming out first, but, you know, because he may try to pull that Peyton Manning stuff and go back to college for a senior year, which is his right. But if I knew he was coming out and I knew he was available, can you imagine if he turns out to be like a great quarterback and you passed on him because you wanted to hold on to Sam? You know what I mean? The Jet fans would never forgive the front office for that. I think we have to imagine that a change will come at head coach when the year is over. But then I think a question that a lot of Jets fans have is, can they trust the general manager? Because this is really not Joe Douglas's team, or at least this is a lot of holdovers from Mike McCagney, including right. Sam Darnold. Yeah. So what's your take on Joe Douglas? Is this a guy who can kind of, you see him stripping it all down now, but can he build it back up? Well, I mean, he came from a, a, a pretty successful organization in Philadelphia. I think you, when you sit at someone's side for years, uh, you kind of learn those things, you know, even if it's just by osmosis. But I think that he is a uh, dedicated uh, guy. I think that he has an idea of how he wants to build a team, and it's going to take a little bit of time. They have, they have a number of draft picks this year. Um, I mean – I believe in him. I think that he could probably make turn this thing around, you know, given some time. Um, obviously, players have to play too. You know, we've seen guys that have have have, have made teams that are supposed to be really good, and, and and players have underperformed. So, I believe in Joe Douglas. I think, given that time, given that power which he has, and, and like you said, he's stripping it down. Um, 
I think that he'll be able to make those decisions that put the players in the right decision, uh, right position. Now, the next head coach, that's another step that he has to be successful in. They can't have this kind of a miss, you know, because this is historically bad what's going on right now in these past two years. I mean, they gave you reason to think that at the end of last year, they gave you reason to think that this year could possibly be something. And now we see what it is. There's just, it, it, the players aren't there. The, the execution at the right time, they just seem overmatched, man. I mean, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the, they, they've, the fewest, they've, I mean, they've had a, 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 like an eight point loss. Most of their losses during the Adam Gase era is by two, three possessions. I mean, this is ridiculous. 24 nothing to Miami. I mean, getting blown out. What was what was the score last week to the to the Kansas City? I mean, it's just, it's just horrible. Half and half, you know, playing for a quarter looking good, and then the rest of the game you don't even consider that they'll be in it. You know, it, it's just it's historically bad. They have to get a good head coach in here. They have to establish some kind of culture, the Jet Way, whatever that is going to be. And I, I I I trust Joe Douglas. I think that he has the wherewithal. I think he has the knowledge to be able to turn this thing around as far as making some of the good decisions that it takes. And then the players, it's up to them. Otis, you were talking about the Jets lack of competitiveness, getting blown out in a lot of games. I feel like that is a contrast to what we have seen out of the New York Giants, who, even though they are one and seven, have played a lot of close games. How encouraged are you by the fact that even though they have lost almost 90% of their games so far this year that most of them have been close and they've had chances to win. I think you have to be encouraged. I think you have to be encouraged by the fact that they fight, that they compete, that they uh, come down to, you know, the last couple possessions and with an opportunity where you have to be discouraged is at the quarterback position though. Because if you think about it, those mistakes that are, that, that he's making Daniel Jones have cost them games, you know? I mean, I think earlier this season, they had a 19 play drive and he threw an interception in the red zone. You got to cast that in. That's a long drive. You can't come away with nothing. You know, things like that, the decisions that are being made. I know it's just his second year. I know he's, you know, really starting to get some starts under his belt and everything. But at this point, you would think it'd be better. He has more turnovers than, inter than touchdowns. I mean, they have, I think, seven touchdown passes this year or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. Like you said, the New York football scene is, is putrid right now. It's not good. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by the head coach though. I'm, I'm a Joe judge guy. I like him. I, I think his, his approach to the game, his uh, attitude, the way he leads the culture that he's trying to instill in this organization uh we we still haven't gotten anything official as far as if golden tate is being punished for his comments but man on the outside it looks like he's being punished i mean he was uh jettisoned over to the uh first team uh, uh practice squad type offense yesterday when they went to team uh, uh team uh part of the of the uh practice he was over there getting the first team defense ready for this week's game so he's a no-nonsense coach I'm encouraged by him I, I have confidence in in the coaching staff that they have I think Jason Garrett is doing a good job it's the quarterback right now it's you know even when they had Saquon Barkley back there he wasn't getting a lot of yards because defenses are able to key on him or they're able to, you know, pay close attention to him and say, quarterback, you beat us. And he's not beating them. He's not making those throws. He's overthrowing guys. He's throwing to the wrong guy. He's, he should be throwing the ball out of bounds and he's throwing it up for grabs where people can, where they're getting interceptions and things like that. And that's, that's, that's more than just a momentum killer. That's a, that, that kills, that, that brings a team down. You know what I mean? We got we got a drive. We got an opportunity, and there's a turnover, whether it be a strip sack, a fumble, or an interception that's been thrown up for grabs. So there's a lot of things that are wrong with this team. But yeah, I like the fight. I like the fact that they are in these games that they aren't just getting blown out every week. Uh, tighten up that quarterback play, um, and you might have something. So fair to say, a little bit more hope on the Giants than the yeah. Jets. Yeah. 
but a lot more. But a lot more, and yeah. but still at one and seven, and in a division yeah. that is really for the taking at this point. What in the second? This is the worst division in football, worst division that we've ever seen. In the second half, what do we need to see, not just from this team, but from Daniel Jones? It's time for him to not just keep them in games, but actually win some. Yeah, well, I, I just spoke about it, man. It, it's you got to stop making the dumb mistakes. You got to just stop throwing the ball up there. There was a play uh, late in that game um, against Tampa. He threw the ball away and everybody exhaled. It was like, <laughs> which something should be normal, expected. That's your job. It was like, oh, he did it. Oh, thank goodness he threw the ball away. Uh, you know, <laughs> that that's elementary. You know, and he's been burned so many times and he comes into the press conferences and, and you got to give him credit because he does own up to it. I got to be better. I got to play smart. I got to do this. Well, when is it going to happen? That's the question. So you need to see that in the second half. And you're exactly right, Chris, that he's got to start winning these games. That's what you're paid to do. You're the franchise quarterback. You're the guy that they're saying, yeah, he's our guy. You got to make these plays. And like you said, this is up for the taking. It's amazing that they are still in it. <laughs> One and seven. It's a joke. Yeah. So go ahead and be the best of the worst teams. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about New York football here. It's pretty much all negative. Uh, but, you know, you tough. cover sports, you know, in and around New York. The other really big story in New York sports right now, Steve Cohen has bought the Mets. It's He's going to close any day now. Uh, he may have by the time this interview airs. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh, Friday, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you were a Mets fan right now, just how excited would you be about this new era in Queens and the prospect of Steve Cohen taking over as the richest owner in baseball? That part right there is what sells me on it. I mean, right there, you know, and he has a passion for the team. He loves the team. I mean, what better scenario would a Met fan have coming off of what you just had than a guy who's loaded and loves the team, grew up loving the team. He's going to try to do his best to uh, put the best product out there on the field. He went through the, the, the glory days of the Mets, right? He also went through the days where it's like, oh, man, you know, I can't believe this. You know what they're putting out there. And as a fan and you have, on, you know, like almost bottomless pockets. Hey, you're you. And now it's time for him to put up or shut up because you've been sitting back all those years, you know, killing the team, killing the ownership. Now it's time for you to say, let's turn this thing around. I think if, I'm, you know, as a Met fan, I would be ecstatic, especially, like I said, coming off of what you just come off. You, it's, it's polar opposites, you know, where, where the will ponds were cash strapped. Unfortunately, um, I don't, you know, deny that they had a love for the team and they wanted to see it, you know, but maybe they just didn't have the wherewithal. They didn't make the smart decisions as well to put them in that position. We've seen this team, what was it, 2015 in the World Series. Let's not forget that. You know, we've always heard, heard about the pitching. We need that pitching staff to stay healthy first off and then go out there and perform to the back of your baseball card. Now we need to bring in some free agents. We need to start stocking that uh, uh, farm system, all those sort of things, put the right people in position. I like uh, Luis Ros Rojas as a manager. Um, I think uh, just him being, you know, how he was raised around the game. I think it's, it's you know, Felipe and, and Moises Alou and those guys, you know, that's his family. I mean, so he knows the game. Now you need to go out and get those free agents and stock that, that farm system so you can make trades or you can bring guys up. I think you have, you know, Pete Alonzo, Conforto, you know, those guys, Dom Smith had a great year. Um, Jeff McNeil seems like he's a keeper, you know, and the pitching staff obviously is, 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 the, is where they hang their hat. You know, you get Noah coming back next year. So, Man, I would be on fire. I would definitely be on fire if I was if I was a Mets fan. We'll see how it goes. Certainly a lot of promise. That's Otis Livingston, sports director of CBS2 here That's in it? New York. What's up? That's it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, it's
it's you know we don't have that much time i would <laughs> i could talk for hours but there you go. <laughs> you're a busy awesome. man we gotta let you get back to work otis we appreciate your time best of luck with everything my pleasure take care guys be safe thanks so much otis